Alright guys, welcome back, Half Fast 719, coming back at you with the, the Ram Man locking hub install. Read all the instructions, the dude over there, Wayne, that guy, that guy's hilarious, that's all I gotta say. Some of the crap on here <laughs> that I'm reading. I just I just can't stop laughing. Um anyway, basically this sheet we'll start off with the sheet. Start off with welcome back. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking in. Thanks for subscribing. So uh no photos, no warranty. They want the a picture of your truck. Basically the side of the door. I'll show you real quick what they want. <clears throat> for the warranty. They want you basically to take a picture of the side of your truck like this. Showing the model, make, model, whatever year, and that the hub is installed. Um, or you can do a video. So, in order for your warranty to be effective, you must uh, do two pictures. So they want a side picture and the wheel with the locking hub. Um, it's pretty straightforward. The, uh, that's all the instruction so that's that's this sheet you Gary Gary blowing up my phone talking crap about trucks there's my receipt um, I'll get to this too later but uh, round spacers they go on here they look like washers but they go on the on there Spacer plate goes between the knuckle and the wheel bearing. That's this plate. As you can see, square. I'll, I'll get to that later. That's funny. Um, install the locker under the hub before you install the hub on your truck. So I basically want you to install this onto here before you... Uh, uh, put this the wheel bearing on um, so this way it slides in one piece because apparently people are jacking it up somehow I don't know why um, so this is pretty pretty funny right pink sheet installing the Ram Man products we, re we recommend that all parts be installed by an ASE technician or people that are experienced and know what they are doing People that ask these types of questions are unqualified to do installations. <laughs> what are slip joint pliers? Oh, let's go to slip joint pliers real quick. Slip joint pliers. This is a slip joint plier. It is a plier. Regular plier. See the joint? See how it slips? Slip joint pliers. Okay, hilarious. Um, how do you put snap rings on or take them off? You have a snap ring in here or C clip. You have snap ring pliers. So you go in here like this, and then these are reversible. So we can reverse them. Just doing this video so that uh, he knows. That uh, I'm not that stupid, even though he probably won't say that. Snap ring pliers, they go in there into those holes, and you can take the snap ring out. Oh, it's hard to do one hand. Um, anyway, I reposition the snap ring so that I can read that bearing number that's down in there. So, there's a part number in between there. Anyway, snap ring pliers. Got it. Where does the rotor go? Well, the rotor's going to go on here. On there. In the front of the vehicle. Okay, so I'm good there. Which day, way does the spacer plate go on? Well, I have this hub upside down. So, 
it looks like it can go that way, but does it? Or maybe it goes that way. Does it? Or maybe it goes this way. Oh wait, does it? Or maybe it goes that way. Anyway. So this guy's pretty funny. So that spacer can go <laughs> go on any way. Okay, got that down. Where does the ABS wire go? Well, the wire connects to the sensor. And the ABS sensor goes into this hole. Okay, got it. Got it. How do you bench bleed a master cylinder? Now that one, that one some people might be questioned on. Um, but anyway, this applies to his other products. But basically, bench bleed a master cylinder by sticking the master cylinder in a vise and you pump it with fluid in it until it builds pressure. You're basically just filling the cylinder for the master cylinder with fluid. You're basically pre-bleeding the master cylinder. These are questions that have been asked multiple times over the years. So, because he does do a lot of uh, brake, uh, Mopar brake stuff, uh, you know, brake boosters. Um, anyway. So, now let's get on to some of these. Read this for your warranty. Um, Basically, it just says that they're Timken bearings. Uh, there are sensors. There are some sensors that go in that are longer, ABS sensors. So if the ABS sensor goes in and bottoms out before you can tighten it, that means it's too long and he wants you to add a, sh uh, a shim, basically. Um, which is basically all that's talking about. And it gives you links. Links to go to. <clears throat> um... They've been in business since 1981, working on brakes and drive lines. They have fantastic reputation, zero complaints with the Better Business Bureau, and are charter members. Anyway, um, but that's refunds, returns. So now let's get to the re returns and refunds. <laughs> All right, this is where he gets a little funny. Returns and refunds, we didn't offer refunds or returns. All sales are final. All our parts are custom made and must be built to order. They machine parts specifically for your exact vehicle, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. So it's not to my specific vehicle, it's to my make and model. Um, anyway, so let's go into, these are actual past refund requests we've had. These are not meant to be funny. It says right there. These are not meant to be funny. I don't find them funny. I find them hilarious. I did not like the packaging. <laughs> my wife is so mad at me for spending money on my truck. My kids need books for school. I just got the notice. My neighbor can't help me install it. He's moving. It seems more complicated than the pictures. Which really isn't that complicated, but if you have no mechanical skills, then I guess it could be. Um, I've decided I don't like the design. I'm not sure why, but I can't see how it can work. I just don't understand. All axles must have a nut on the end. Everybody knows that. One stud came loose. They must have must have dropped in the shipping so I'm not <clears throat> not sure if they uh, Ram Man wrote that they must have dropped in shipping or if the customer wrote that the bolt pattern looks wrong I can tell from looking at it on the table which I'll get into that in a second I left my hubs locked for 13,000 miles and they don't seem to want to unlock I want my money back so he goes in here to say to keep them unlocked unless you use them unless you need four wheel drive I can't install my U-joints on my 98 Dodge 2500. I don't know how. What do I do? So, he wants to replace U-joints, but he doesn't know how. I don't like the spacers, so I'm not going to use them on my truck. I honestly, I don't like spacers, but I get the design and why he had to do that is what it is um, for that part. And I'll get into spacers 
and this in a couple pages. Um, I like the design, but I'm going to improve it. Thanks, but I'm going to make my own hubs. So, I looked into that. I looked into doing my own hubs. Um, because, now we'll, we'll start into that right now. So this is a Ford, Ford wheel bearing. So it's a Temkin Ford wheel bearing, which are about 400 bucks for the wheel bearing. So, then you'd need to make a spacer, which I'm sure you could buy a spacer or get some type of spacer in this diameter or whatever. Um, but let's say I have a plasma cutter and let's say I make a spacer <clears throat> and this much steel, let's say 40 bucks, 40 bucks for the steel, <clears throat> 400 bucks for the wheel bearing, 40 bucks for the steel, 400 bucks. 840 bucks right there uh, lug studs because these have to be longer because of these these spacers as you can see they're longer so wheel studs are let's say two bucks a piece two dollars times what is this 16 so 32 bucks then you need to get these and make sure they're the right diameter depth thickness I should say which is I think it's four hundred thousandths and this is four hundred thousandths um, or maybe not maybe that's eight hundred I don't remember exactly but anyway I looked into all of it so we're looking at about uh, nine hundred bucks already then you need to buy the locker <clears throat> these lockers you can find them on they're Ford factory lockers with the O-ring because the Ford is a the Ford is a vacuum assisted four wheel drive setup. So you'd need to spend I kind of I think they were two hundred or two hundred and fifty bucks for just a the regular Ford locker. Well then, because the stub shaft in the axle is different. It's different gear pattern, gear or uh, tooth. I think uh, Ford is thirty something, and this is thirty five. I I don't quote me on it. It looks a lot more than thirty five, but anyway, the spline pattern is different from the Ford to the Dodge. So you'd have to have one of these that has a C clip in it. You'd have to have one of those machined to to this uh, locker and you'd have to have this one machined because this is where your axle goes in your stub shaft goes in there and you go on his videos he explains it all the stub shaft goes in here it spins on this uh, freely so your axle your u-joint is just sitting here while the wheel bearing is spinning and until you lock it engage the lock then it meets, it mates basically this one, this one in here that can spin also to the outside, which is the these ones. Anyway, I looked into it. It was gonna cost me, I think, with uh, with without even doing the, the the design of these splines and having a machine shop make these, which they probably would have cost me. $500 to design it to make it to get them the sizes and all the junk so more than likely this last one he doesn't like the design he's gonna make it himself he probably was a machine shop or new machine shop and he probably took the measurements did all the stuff and had a buddy machine him out so, uh, this this piece and the piece that's in here um, not to mention this is a Ford wheel bearing so the lug nut pattern is different. This is a uh, eight by one hundred and seventy millimeters, and the Dodge and Chevy are an eight by six and a half inch, which I think is a eight by one hundred and sixty five point one millimeter uh, pattern. So you'd have to have these all drilled out um, at a shop. So looking at all that, that was going to cost. It probably would have cost three grand 
to, to make these work. Now, you can get wheel bearings for a lot cheaper, but these are Temkin. Temkins were running in roughly 400 bucks. So, with that say, being said, <clears throat> so, you know, 1700 1800 bucks, no big deal. I'd rather spend the money than try to do my own deal. But anyway, um, there's your warranty thing. Locking hub warranty, um, which goes into saying that some people said they only had 10,000 miles on them and they had no grease, they had nothing. Um, it does give you this little port. Let's see, this little uh, grease fitting right here. He's very proud of this grease fitting. So you come, you put it in there, and you can pump grease uh, into this wheel bearing. Which I'm gonna go buy some grease. He says that they come, they come preloaded with grease already, uh, with three ounces of grease. But he recommends to put about an ounce of grease into each one of them, um, high quality grease, which is in one of these pictures. I can't remember. Um, basically, and then this this one here. Um, this talks about 4500s, 5500s, um, that there's a thicker uh, wear washer, whatever. I'm not doing that, so I don't really care about that. This says don't damage the lockers because inside of here, inside this piece that holds this piece to this piece, as you can see here, it's got this little lip, there's a little lip in there. That holds this cap on and if you don't push your axle all the way into the differential then it breaks these little tabs off so he wants you to make sure that that axle your stub shaft is seated all the way into the uh, the uh, differential and then this here this is for 94 to uh, 2008 which I don't have um, Basically, they want you to lube this uh, needle bearing that's in here. Um, anyway, uh, 94 to 99, basically, this talks about the rotors are mounted on the back side of the wheel bearing. So you have to press out all the studs and press the studs back in, which I'm not worried about. Here's the grease. This is the grease he recommends. Luber plate. Um, Luber, Luber plate, I don't know, um, special auto marine grease, it's got a molly in it, whatever, whatever, the hub spacers, um, this is where he gets into his little NASCAR racing technology stuff, it says the steel spacers are technology used in Formula One and NASCAR, this is a design improvement. The objective is to decrease the contact surface area. The number one cause of bearing degeneration or failure in, is heat. Or failure is heat. The rotor disc is a source of heat. They are bearing killers, the spacers, or superb insulators. Um, so basically what it is is your rotors sitting on top of these spacers. And it allows air, kind of like a... Uh, a heat sink so your disc has fins as the wheel spins those fins shoot air out and they they'll pull air in and shoot air out so having this gap between the rotor between the rotor and the spacer puts less heat I don't know the temperature um, but he's done his research uh, apparently NASCAR does spacers um, Anyway, he's not talking about these spacers. He's talking about these spacers. This is what keeps the heat off the bearing from the brake brake uh, rotor. Um, the spacers allow circulating air to help cool disc and hub. All rotor discs are vented for this reason. The spacers greatly reduce the total surface area of the actual oh actual contact of the rotor disc with bearing hub. This, of course, significantly reduces heat transfer. The bearing hubs 
run much cooler than the factory OEM design. This plus proper greasing greatly increases strength and hub life span. A cool bearing with proper lubrication will run nearly indefinitely. It's just a fact. Wayne Brown. Um, anyway. Yeah, so and then here's here's some ideas. If you want to cut out your center center cap or whatever so that you can have access. And then it just talks about this page just talks about um, locking and unlocking, what it does. Basically, if you don't know, don't install them. Um, this talks about slip retraction. If you're, obviously, if you're in four-wheel drive and you got the front lock wheels locked, uh, two-wheel drive, it'll turn sharper. Four-wheel drive is going to want to push because all four wheels want to go straight. Um, there's a little quick piece of information if you got a ram which i'm gonna refer i want to refer a couple people um refer a fan refer a friend program earn a hundred dollars for every buying customer you refer on our kits um basically you just hand a you give it to them write your name your phone number and they send it in or they call Whatever it is, a hundred bucks. A little video, which I'll do, obviously. I'll get a hundred bucks there. So, um, um, basically, it talks about you go buy a manual online. They want you to be have some mechanical common sense and experience. Ram man's not responsible for improper insulation or damage. Um, if not, go seek a qualified person. This talks about the the 98 to 94 to 2008 um, which maybe my brother-in-law will go buy some of those for his uh, 96 I think he's got a 12 valve um, maybe he'll go buy some and it talks about the spacers uh, the lock rings a little, little different for his truck um, same thing over here IFS which I don't have and that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, but yeah, so I'll probably install these tomorrow. I don't know. Um, anyway, getting a lot of text messages, but uh, but yeah, basically I have the. I want to say it's the passenger side U joint. I got to replace. And then, uh, then we'll install these. So, comes with the 16 heat sink washers. Uh, six screws for these. The little grease fitting for grease. Um, I do have to go buy some grease because I want to put the ounce of some type of molly grease in there. Alright, so apparently I stopped recording because my camera probably did it because he was sick of hearing me but anyway the grease I have my grease gun is just a marine gray grease but he wants to use uh, molly some type of molly grease um and I was going on to the these spacers these are uh stamped spacers so the machine just stamps them out um so you have a a rolled side and you have a flat sharp side I'll put the flat sharp side down on the bottom and I'll put this, you know, piece in here. I'll assemble this. I'll, I'll probably put some grease in here. It doesn't say anything about putting grease in there. But I'm assuming you probably want to put some grease in here so that when you lock and unlock them, um, they're fine. And they do have a little gasket on them. Also, I did, the these are just the standard Ford design. They do have a mile marker design and uh, uh, I did tell them I want the mile marker so they're $350 for the mile marker ones and they said they're gonna send me uh, for $200 they'll send me the mile markers uh, out so once they get those in they're gonna contact me and they'll send them out uh, one thing I do want to do when I install these um, 
I'm going to check the rolling resistance, which is why I bought this tool here, this inch pound tool. I'm going to check the rolling resistance with the brake. Um, with the brake caliper off, now it might be, um, I'm going to test with the, the way it is right now, um, which realistically I don't want to because those, wear, those bearings are worn in, which means they might be loose, but I'm going to do wheel bearing that's on there now, and then I'll stick these on. And I'll, I'll put it in lock, so it's turning the axle and diff and everything. And I'll do a rolling resistance of that. And then I'll unlock it and see how the difference is with it being free. So, um, but yeah, pretty much that's going to be it for, that's how to install it and everything. And, uh, well, next video will be of the installation of this. And uh, we'll go from there. And then I'll shoot a video of afterwards. Just going into town. See if my mileage has improved just going into town. And uh, see if I notice any noise differences or anything. So stay tuned for those videos, guys. But that's going to be it. It's a long video. And uh, hopefully the installation. I'll edit and cut videos and stuff like this. But I just wanted to go over all his documents because I thought it was... I thought it was pretty funny, even though he says it's not funny because he doesn't probably probably doesn't want people getting butt hurt. Um, some people, some people are just I'll say it because I don't care. Some people are just stupid. Um, I'm stupid at times, but most people are well, some people are just really stupid. All right, guys, that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, comment below. Let me know what you guys think, and. Uh, then after I do that, do a little Project Crack Pipe exhaust. So, alright, thanks for watching. See you guys on the next video. Peace.